So, to evaluate this constant d, I am going to take my definition of my Green's uh, differential equation over here and do a integral. Okay? And that integral is going to be, what kind of integral should it be? 1d, 2d, 3d, 2d integral, right? So, this is going to be an integral okay, over s ds. What kind of a s should it be? Where is my singularity? Origin. Origin. So, I should include it, right? So, the, the easiest symmetrical way of doing it is to have a a circle okay, of radius epsilon, okay, epsilon is some small number and integrate about this. So, I will call this surface to be S infinity, okay. uh, sorry not infinity, S epsilon, that is what I am going to do. Okay. So, uh, evaluating these uh, integrals uh, requires some little bit of care. Okay, so the first term over here, when it integrates, I'm going to call it term A. The second term, I'm going to call term B, and the third term over here, I'm going to call term C. Okay, so we'll individually go over A, B, C, and do a budgeting to get B. That's the uh, approach that we're going to take. Okay, so let's look at the first term for A. So it's going. To, it's it's saying what? Now I'll just write one integral symbol. Um, okay, let it be. We'll just be consistent. We'll write del square g uh, of r um, integrated over ds. What is ds in polar coordinates? R dr d theta, right? So this is r dr d theta. Okay. Is there any theta dependence? No. Right, so that uh, integral over d theta we can immediately write as two pi. Right, so I'm going to write this as two pi, okay, and uh, del square g of r, r dr. That's what I have to evaluate. Okay, um, and this is over r. So that could be one way of doing it. Okay, but the trouble is I still have this del square g sitting with me. Okay. Another way of doing it could be, if I look at this term over here, can I apply, can I think of first of all, can I write this del square g as del, as the divergence of a vector, right. This follows from the rules of vector calculus that del square g can be written as the divergence of grad g, okay. You can just write out the operators, take the dot product, you will get exactly this. Okay, so what am I doing now? So when I'm doing integral of del dot grad g ds, what theorem of vector calculus comes to mind? It's a divergence under a, a closed volume or in two D closed surface. So which theorem? Divergence divergence theorem, right? So divergence theorem will convert this del dot something into the outward flux, right? So, this will become outward flux of what vector del g dot n hat and d l, right. So, one root was what we were trying over here splitting it as uh, into r and theta. Another root is this root, okay. This root seems to be little bit more intuitive because I have reduced the integral straight away. What is n hat over here? r cap exactly. So, n hat is for example, always pointing radially outwards. So, that is my n hat is equal to my r hat. Okay. Uh, what is uh, the definition of uh, del g in uh, polar coordinates? This one is not that difficult. Del g in polar coordinates, the first term is simply dou g by dou r along r hat and 1 by r dou g by dou theta along theta hat. Okay. So, you know n hat is r hat, theta hat is has what relation to r hat? Perpendicular, right. r hat and theta hat are perpendicular to each other, right. So, only one term is going to survive from this integral and that is going to be del g by del, del, g by del r, right. So, this is going to become 
integral del g by del r right and uh, what else do I have over here that is about it right and this will become a d l right. Now, I am going to choose epsilon to be much much less than 1 like epsilon is very small it is just enough to include the singularity right. So, I am going to keep epsilon very small ok. So, here is another approximation that I will tell you I mean that I will use. So, h naught 2 right that is the that is the function that I have right. There exists a asymptotic form for this when x is very small ok and that is based on the fact that j 0 of x is approximately 1 when x is much much less than 1 and y 0 of x is approximately 2 by pi log of x ok. Again this is just information I am giving you which this is very very well documented in various mathematical handbooks ok asymptotic forms of special functions ok. So, what do I do next? I will use this form and you can see that the second this y 0 you can see that it it has the correct uh, singularity kind of a shape right as x tends to 0 what happens to log of x? It goes to minus infinity undefined right. So, it is capturing the singularity well and j 0 is a finite quantity 1 ok. So, from these two terms what survives is going to be um, so let us let us write it down over here. So, del g by del r that is what I have to do ok. So, del by del r of 1 plus 2 by pi log of k r d l that is what I have to do. I have just substituted the form of g. So, the first term goes away second term what will I get? Oh, you are right yeah yeah there should be a uh, it should be a minus j here right because I have def because of the way that I have defined uh, h 2 is j minus j y right that is right. So, the first term goes away when I take the d by dr second term will give me what? What is the derivative of log k r with respect to r? k right. So, I am going to get a minus 2 j k by pi ok into 1 by k r integrated over d l ok. What will this integral over I am now doing this integral only on the surface right. On this surface the value of r is constant right on the line rather. So, what will this integral evaluate to? Integral d l will just simply give me 2 pi r and r is equal to epsilon right. So, we will just write this as minus 2 j k by pi into 1 by k r into 2 pi r evaluated at r is equal to epsilon. What am I left with? k k goes away, pi pi goes away, r goes away. Okay, r is small but finite. So, I can cancel r in the numerator and denominator right. So, what am I left with? Minus 4 j. Is that clear? So, remember I mean the, the meaning of this is del g by del r evaluated at, at all points over here along the circle boundary right. There is no variation. So, this integral over d l simply becomes uh, 2 pi r. Okay. r is not varying if r were varying then it would be a different thing r is constant over here. So, it is more like an integral over d theta over here. So, I get a minus 4 j. So, term a evaluates to minus 4 j. Then we come to term b ok. Now, term b is um, where we can use our uh, this r d r d theta approximation yeah. Uh, there will be a b yeah 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 you yeah, are right yeah g has a b everywhere that is right. So, g the b will come in over here minus 4 j b. yeah exactly very good. So, there is a b over here and there is a b over here yeah ok very good. So, let us come to the b term. So, I have a k squared integral over g of r r dr d theta 
right and again I can write this as 2 pi k squared integral g of r r dr okay yeah no that is here integral over dl give me 2 pi r this is what we started evaluating so there is no additional 2 pi right the 2 over pi has been taken account into account over here okay okay so again what do i do i have a special form for g i'll just substitute that right so 2 pi k squared integral uh r and 1 minus j 2 by pi log of k r this time i should not forget the b and a dr yeah that is my g b times hankel 2 hankel 2 is j minus j y and j is this and y is this over here no we didn't use we didn't follow this approach we followed this approach where we can use the divergence theorem to convert it. So, that is the 2 pi that you were referring to. Yeah, we did not use that approach over here. We use that approach for this term b. Okay. So, this is the approach that we used over here. So, let us write it over here. Now, when I look at this expression, let us just gather all the constants outside. So, 2 pi k squared uh, b I can take out. Okay, and then finally, I have an integral of r dr, right? And then I have an integral so zero to epsilon, and then I have a term which is uh, j two by pi integral r times log of k r dr. Those are the two terms, right? Now, without actually doing all the math, you can see what ha what ha what will happen to the first term over here. Integral r dr will give me r squared by two evaluated epsilon and zero, and I'm going to take the limit epsilon tending to zero, eventually, right? So we are going to take limit epsilon tends to zero. That is going to happen anyway. Okay. So this first term over here is tends to zero as epsilon tends to zero. Fine. Then the other term that I have to worry about is integral of r log k r. Okay. So, what can we do about integral of r log k r? I mean, we can just integrate it. We know how to integrate this, right? We can take we can take uh, uh, log as the first term, integration by parts, right? So, this if I just let us just look at this term over here, okay. otherwise I will have to keep writing the constants each time. So, the square bracket term I am writing over here. So, first term okay, uh, multiplied by integral of the second function. right? So, I am taking this as the first function and this as the second function in integration by parts. So, log k r multiplied by integral of second function which is r square by 2 evaluated between 0 and epsilon minus integral 0 to epsilon derivative of the first function right which is going to give me a what is it going to give me 1 by 1 by r right the k k will cancel yeah multiplied by r square by 2 dr Okay. Now, uh, what happens over here is uh, there are so is equal to this. Let's let's look at the second term over here. Second term is going to cancel off one r. I'll be left with a r dr by two. R dr by two integrated zero to epsilon. What's going to happen? This guy is going to tend to zero. Finally, what am I left with? R squared <coughs> log k r. Right. So, r squared log of k r that is the term that will have to be evaluated at 0 and epsilon. How do I evaluate this function? Is there some does are you reminded of some way of 
evaluating this limit as r tends to 0, L'Hopital's rule, right. So, first I have to get it into a 0 by 0 form, right. So, I can do that as, so limit r tends to 0, this becomes log of k r by 1 by r square, right. So, either 0 by 0 or uh, 0, I mean infinity by infinity form, whichever way, right. So, derivative of each term. So, first term will become 1 by r, second term will, I um, mean the term in the bottom will become minus 2 by r cube is equal to minus r squared by 2. So, what is its limit as r is equal to 0? 0 and at epsilon it will be minus epsilon squared by 2. So, what is its contribution? Overall 0, right. So, all of this hard work is going to give term b, right, term b is equal to 0, okay. So, this is, I mean, we have gone through a lot of very uh, sort of, I mean, this is basically class 12 math, right, L'Hopital's rule and integration by parts and all of that, right. So, it is not very complicated, but just notice what happened. G is your Green's function. We have into physically seen that it has a singularity at 0 because that a Bessel y function was going to 0. Even though the function is singular, what is the integral of that function? It is finite. In this case, it is 0. Right? It is just like a delta function. The delta function is undefined at the singularity, but its integral is finite. Similar thing has happened over here. Okay? So, next we will look at the remaining terms and put them all together.